HiSec Buyback offers 90% GDA anywhere in HiSec. Simply go to HiSec.EveBuyback.com, appraise your items, create a contract, and get paid quickly. And you should be up. All right. Good evening, everyone. This is Rundle and Niter. Welcome to Talking in Stations for Thursday, the 14th of October. Man, time is flying. And speaking of flying, so's the game. Lots of things, lots of things to talk about today on the show. Uh, I have a couple of guests. Uh, we have uh, Nick Bison's in the back doing the engineering. He might maybe jump in from time to time. Uh, we have uh, Macalypse as well with us. Say hello, Mac. Everyone. Malaclips, I guess. Mal, Mal I guess. Like Malaclips. But bad. Yeah, Malaclips. I'll call you Mal or something. And then we got uh, Fuston, a uh, gentleman where you'll have a bit of an interview with at the end. But, uh, you know, he's welcome to jump in and add, add his opinion along as we run through some of the topics. Hello, uh, everyone. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and that's also true for anyone in the uh, in the audience for those listening live today on Twitch. Uh, and of course, if uh, you're listening to this later on in, in YouTube, which a lot of our listeners do, feel free to leave comments and uh, maybe we'll get a chance to answer some of your questions there or, or address them on future shows. Excellent. All right. Let's talk about player events. There's a lot of stuff uh, that's happened over the last little while here. Um, we're going to kind of cover some player news and then we'll go into some of the game news and then um, we'll talk about uh, some uh, some posh fan stuff in, in the interview section. So player news. Um, NC Dot and Darkseid uh, went and attacked an Imperium incursion fleet. So Imperium was off doing an incursion. They, I guess they have a, a SIG that gives opportunities for new players to run incursions. So that it's maybe not the most optimal system. But NC Dot and Darkseid tried to attack them, right? And so um, that was in period basis. It ended up being a little bit of a, a bigger battle, but uh, it ended up being like almost 48 billion ISK loss. Uh, some of the interesting things that happened in this fight, um, there was a lawn boosher that accidentally booshed a bunch of them uh, 100k away, and they were able to escape. Um, basically, it was a Legion fleet versus this incursion fleet, right? Uh, and they, there was a immune and rescue fleet that was sent in. They weren't able to do too much. So um, again, so those attackers were able to get extracted because it started kind of going, kind of going odd. So I think uh, legions were brought by Darkseid and Kikimoras were brought by NC Dot. And so there's a should be a a battle report there that's kind of interesting. Um, the Imperium kind of lost a little bit more, uh, but they were, uh, you know, kind of hot dropped on, I guess is not one way of looking at it. But um, I think the, you know, there's probably been this story. Some people have read this story and maybe come across it a few other places. But the interesting thing is for me is that, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to look at it too deep in the sense of like, oh, they were, you know, all in the wrong ships and stuff. This was a, a, a SIG group that helps um, people in the Imperium learn how to fly in incursions and get used to them with maybe not optimal ships. But still, there's some pretty, uh, you know, a lot of Balgorns and stuff. There's a lot of juicy stuff there. And uh, it got escalated a little bit. You can see there was some, some uh, super capitals brought and brought on to the field and so that seemed like uh seemed like a fun little uh do -si do around an incursion it's a little tough to do in an incursion site because um you know things are things are not optimal for pvp at that point um gonna move on to a wormhole brawl in uh we're in one of the wormholes another very large loss of isk 50 billion isk 87 pilots this time instead of you know a few hundred like the other one. Um, there was an action after action report <clears throat> that was written up, but there was also, the whole thing was also uh, streamed on Twitch as well for, for the fight by a pilot by the name of Extra Squishy. Um, so this this is an interesting fight in, in how it kind of escalated. They were rolling, these pilots were rolling a, a five um, and they found five additional rollers from the Indigo generation undocked and in process of rolling their Pulsar home. So the 
these other guys sent in uh, Nighthawk and a couple Bazzi to start bullying them. <clears throat> the Indigo group pulled their Praxis roller back to their Fortizar and watched them, uh, and they were you know, reshipped into Dreads and Carriers and a lift and started you know, warping in on these you know, initial uh, attackers. And so um, they were unable to bring dreads because of the c4 to c5 connection so what they started doing was using counter capital 100 mn uh, fleet which they uh, fed a few of those things in the battle report and they spammed a ton, uh, ton of sabers to try to keep locking them down so much so that all their home contracts they ran out so um good day for the industrialists making sabers that day i guess um so they uh they had some uh um, amar connections in their chain so they kind of hit the bat phone, brought in some logies, some additional shield balgorns. Uh, fortunately, those shield balgorns, balgorns got deleted. Um, so they kind of just kept chewing away at them. The indigo guys who are now on the defensive undocked a couple more uh, haw nags. To, had, so they had the cap total up to eight. And they started, you know, really bashing away on the subcaps. However, Excellent use of multiple boosters got the Hugan out of the lift range. They were able to kill it and pot it. And then um, what they were able to do, even though they were uh, bleeding subcaps at that point because of all the nags, um, they were able to bat phone in the dock workers. So they were able to bump up their DPS and basically get a bunch of shield kikis in. And so they ended up by... This is, I think, an excellent focus in their combat strategy. They focused on the lift by having all the curses nude it while primarying one of the nags with DPS to cap out. So you force one of the, the dreads to cap out, the lift to cap out. And once they got the lift below 20% cap, they basically swapped all DPS over them, broke his reps, and after that, they just chewed all the caps down one by one. So I think that was uh, that is an excellent, if you ever want to know you know, some excellent strategy or you want to watch a video. I watched this video. I think it was a very good video. Uh, you know, it's a little long to watch, but it was an excellent video to watch kind of some good sub cap versus cap battle strategies. I think it was well done. So uh, if you get a chance to, to track down that, uh, let me see if we put that in the show notes here or at least uh, in the stream and uh, this Twitch video at least. I will. I can't cut and paste and talk at the same time. Apparently, do not do multiple things at once. There we go. Oh, I copied the whole wrong thing. All right. Anyways, uh, let's move on to some more player interactions. Uh, last week, I talked a little bit about Brave continuing to move into pure blind. Uh, at the, it was just kind of starting a couple weeks ago, and last week wasn't a lot of uh, on map changes in the dot land. It's starting to to uh, slowly move in that way. They're being very, very methodical. They're taking their time with this, um, and they've now taken two eye hubs in the in the Flying Dangerous constellation. Um, there's some battle reports there. So there's a couple more of the eye hubs that have been uh, uh, reinforced, and they're set to come out on Tuesday. So so Brave is is slowly marching through uh, into pure blind. All right. Yeah, thanks, Nick, for putting the right video in there instead of a, a place that you can't go. I appreciate that. A little, little whoops on my part. All right. Um, let people go and look at dot land and look at pure blind for yourself, uh, but uh, you can slowly watch um, Brave there. So let's move on to a Oracle that died. So there was a, apparently there was a returning player who just came back in Delve. And apparently in, in this region right now, there's a strong millennial gamma ray storm. Um, and there was an unidentified wormhole as well in his area. And kind of as a teaching moment, this comes from uh, one of our staff, Carneros, who you people know. Um, and so I appreciate Carneros putting some time into this. So apparently this oracle died um, and he didn't quite understand what the strong uh, metaliminal gamma ray storms do. 
Uh, and those things, just for, for reference, they will, um, this is a strong one, so your explosive resists are gonna be down 25%. Your remote shield armor rep amount is down 90%. You're gonna have 25% more H shield HP, 25% more cap, um, and your sig radius is gonna go down. So that's not bad, but it also spawns an extra rogue drone site as well. So that might be why, um, you know, maybe it was in the region, but those explosive resists and that shield armor rep amount um, would be not beneficial, it would be negative towards anyone trying to help him. And so, you know, um, there was also a drifter wormhole, right? And so what ended up happening was this poor guy uh, found himself on the wrong end of a test alliance uh, fleet of Kikis um, that came out of a wormhole into Delve and dropped on this poor guy. And uh, he lost, uh, you know, he, had a, he, ended up, he ended up having a bad day, he dropped uh, about 10 billion on that system, on that situation. So. So if you are in any region of space that has any of the storms, pay attention to what they do, pay attention to how they work, and pay attention to wormholes, uh, all wormholes, especially the drifter wormholes as well. But um, those drifter wormholes can be used like a Thera system, basically, which is like a wormhole superhighway or a shortcut, but there's drifters in them. So you got to fight that, but it also means as players can be doing that, right? Players can be moving through those systems easily as well, right? So there's some really good information on EV University about, about the Drifter's wormhole as well. And I mentioned Carneros at the beginning. Uh, so, you know, keep an eye uh, on the Twitch CCP streams. <clears throat> Carneros does some returning player orientations. He talks about these sorts of changes. Um, you know, maybe he'll even talk about this specific one where he uh, maybe might dive into that. Um, so I thank you very much, Carneros, for providing that information for, for an educational moment. All right. So if you are a rare ship whore and you would want to spend lots and lots of ISK, there is a pilot selling lots of rare and expensive AT ships for sale. So he has an APOC Imperial issue, just a mere five trillion ISK if you have that laying around in your wallet. There's a Moriacha, 700 billion, a Fiend, 570 billion, Tiamat, a uh, Kreamoas, an Imp, a Hydra, a Whiptail, a Utu, a Freaky, and there was a Silver Magnet, but it sold. And um, those are some pretty spiffy ships with really big price tags. I don't know about you, but uh, I don't have five trillion ISK laying around. Anyone on the panel here have five billion ISK laying around and we can get maybe a thousand more pilots and we can share the ship? <laughs> I might be able to scrape up five trillion. Let me uh... <laughs> <laughs> check. There's a, you got change for a million dollars? You know? Yeah, <laughs> there's, you know, the, that's it. So that's on, that's uh, this, this thread here is on the forums and it's actually a bit, it's kind of funny. It's one of those things where, you know, you read the post, but sometimes the comments are even better, but someone makes a really good point that this is kind of a very sad moment to be reading this post because it highlights just how much ISK some people have and how some people, some people can actually ask 70 billion or 5 trillion for a ship and expect to get paid. Like, well, I mean, that's the ask price. Who knows if they're yeah. going to get it? But, you know, uh, when they launched that hypernet thing, what was it? Uh, Pro God Legend put up that uh, Raven, I don't know, state issue, corporate issue, something. This ultra rare Raven battleship for three or four trillion, it, they didn't get that. Who knows if you'll actually get that thing, you know? Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Right. But okay, so if his starting point is five trillion, though, let's say that he's expect. Let's say he's doubled his asking price, expecting to be cut in half. Holy shit! Two point five trillion still. Who the hell has two point five trillion is just sitting around to buy a ship that you will never freaking undock? More than likely, because why would you want to lose? that uh, ship after paying that kind of money. 
that's insanity, right? To me, it's just, it's a, yeah. Uh, there are two layers of stratification, I think, that are going on there. One is in the game. You know, there are people who have been playing this game for coming up on 20 years now. When was it released? 20, 2004, something like that? Yep, coming up. And, um, and you know, CCP has released, has created opportunities at various times for people to make just a crazy amount of ISK, as we will shortly discuss. And, um, you know, if you just get one of those every couple of years and somebody farms the hell out of them, you can you can build up some serious uh, wealth. So that's like the in-game stratification. But then there's a larger stratification in our society, right? There are, I mean, there's a huge difference between how much wealth a, a Jeff Bezos or an Elon Musk has, and how much you know you and I, just you know regular scrubs have, right? So you know that that can be. There are plenty of people for whom that's nothing. They that's very fair. That's card, yeah. That's very fair. That's absolutely fair. Uh, and yeah, there's some comments in, in the, uh, in the Twitch chat as we're streaming here, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, maybe it's a piece, it's an asset that increases in value is kind of a question, but yes, it is kind of a, an asset that continues at Kriba, who those people who maybe not know Kriba, Kriba is kind of a long time kind of famous player who collected a lot of ships and participated in the early days of Eve and, uh, has a, you know actually has a capital ship that's in high sec one of the only ones still because he had one at the time when it was allowed and uh he actually i think he has one of the monuments in the you know in space sort of thing and kriba somewhere in there makes a comment hey i'm glad you kind of posted these because now he can kind of give a an, an up-to-date price tag on his assets that are sitting should he ever want to sell them or whatever so maybe in some people's minds this is a a way to, you know, buy it and wait for it to sell, you know, like you kind of said, right, I can, I can well, so scratch if, all my is together and then sell it later. Yeah. So if you want to hedge against inflation, right, like in real markets, people oftentimes run to gold if they think money is going to get less valuable, they think right. gold will hold its value more. Uh, in the same way in, in EVE, if you want to protect yourself against kind of economic fluctuations, then here's something that will reliably increase in value. The thing about the apocalypse, which is the only one there that is like a truly an absurd amount of isk. I mean, even for the Morocco, seven hundred billion. Yeah, it's a lot, but it is it is obtainable to build that kind of wealth in a couple of years without destroying your credit card. Um, right. And as we said, there have been people who have been playing a lot longer than that. But the the apocalypse imperial issue in particular is one of the rarest and oldest ships of that type in the game. I mean. There's one for each of the main factions. There's like a Federate Navy, Megatron, and you know, there's the Raven for the Caldari and so on. And according to Eve University, this was released in 2003. Yeah, it's one of the very first. Right, it was one of the very, very first ones. Yeah, so that is like a crazy old piece of, uh, I don't know, piece of Eve history. Mm -hmm. And the price tag reflects that. Yeah, totally, totally fair. Still, it's... <laughs> For me, it's just five trillion esque. I just like, just like an, you. Know, Jeff Bezos. Let's send an email and see if I can, uh, yeah. you know, bargain and barter. Bargain it, it down, barter it down. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, I mean, you know, a freaky two hundred fifty billion. I mean, you know, if you want to buy a particular show host on Talking Stations, maybe the Thursday evening one, as a little like Christmas gift coming up, I'll take a freaky. Uh, or an U2, I'm pretty sure the show, the engineer, Nick Bison, would I'd gladly take one of those as a little, you know, early Christmas gift. So, you know, if you got that kind of money and you don't know what to do with it, there you go. Now you do. All right. Shiny ships aside, let's move on to what they've done with the game. Because there's been some patch notes. So we're going to quickly move on to that because I want to get to the interview. Uh, all right. So patch notes. From yesterday and today um, let me see I was looking at those I mean there's a few little uh, a lot of it has to do with the Mac client stuff there was some defects um, they fixed an issue with a Concord loyalty point store they fixed an issue that was causing some of the ESS systems to appear outside of intended systems so yay they finally fixed that um, lots of changes for the Mac I think there was a bit of a stream uh, I think it was mentioned on a, um, a bit of a stream yesterday 
um, as a side note to um, one of the other, uh, the totality day week things, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so one of the, <laughs> um, so I was talking about the ESS, they fixed that, that's good. Um, there's some new landmark systems in the Poshvan region. So Poshvan is getting some love, that's good. So they adjusted also the thresholds for the dynamic bounty system. And before anyone asks me, no, I don't know what the new lower system and upper bounds are. I actually went looking for it. So do a lot of other people, it turns out. And somewhere along the way, a player by the name of Garant Severvesi asked CCP somewhere along the way, and they got the following response from GM Ice Cream. Hi, GM Ice Cream here. Thank you for reaching out. It is intentional that the patch notes do not provide more detailed information. Providing more detailed information would allow players to engage in activities without the magic of discovery, which is a very important part of EVE Online. Please let me know if you have any more concerns. Best regards, GM Ice Cream. So there was a number of snarky comments after that. <laughs> it was kind of, I thought it was quite funny. But, uh, you know, if the people learn... discovery, We're sure to hear that phrase again. Yeah, you hear that all the time. That's kind of a, you know... But I've talked about that on the show here, right? They've, they've started being more... Uh, there's some good English coming up. They started being more obtuse to this sort of thing, even pushing patches live to the live server and skipping, you know, the the test server because they don't want people to um, early, uh, you know, break it down and 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 learn how to game the system or take advantage of it. They are trying to put more of the game discovery elements um, into the game. Right. And so, yeah. So there's a good question it, 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 right off the bat. Apex. Yes. Excellent question. So then why even bother telling us it was changed? Because imagine the shit storm. If you don't tell them, if you don't tell the player base it was changed, because one day you were getting whatever percent or whatever, the, you know, the thing. And then all of a sudden patch happened. And then the next day you're like, what the hell? Why didn't you tell me? That's the only reason they tell you in the first place. It's a kind of a no-win situation. That's my, you actually hit the nail around the hat. For me, it's a bit of a no-win situation. You yeah. don't tell people, you're screwed. You do tell people, but you don't want to tell them what the discovery is. You're kind of still screwed. People are going to bitch about it one way or the other. I personally actually like that they don't tell us what the numbers are. This is actually, I mentioned it last show. This is why I don't like things like hobo leaks. I don't like it. I don't like having all this shit figured out for me, even if I'm not the one who's going to go experience it and learn it. I think this whole one of the main points I play a damn game like this is I want to learn what's going to happen next. I want to learn what's going to come and happen. Or I, I don't want to know exactly what's going to happen. Otherwise, like, what's the point? It's yeah, so it kind of, it makes the universe feel smaller if everything is, you know, analyzed and solved yeah. before patch day. I think you can make a, a distinction between things that you would have a reasonable expectation to know about before they happen. Like if the stats on a module on my ship change, well, like my character in game would know that, right? You don't want to, and you don't want to put people in a position where they're undocking and they haven't been told that their ship now does something different. That would, you know, be pretty unfair. Right, but right. for example, with uh, with I don't know if they change something in wormholes. Like, why should you know that in advance? It's another galaxy. <laughs> and I, I, yeah, and I think there's breakpoints to that too, right? Like, so thinking about this bounty system, right? I mean, if they change it by 10%, then okay, it's, it's, they're just it's minor tweak. But if they drop the payouts by 90%, in other words, it all went to like 0.1 of what it was, like that's a major change. And I would probably want to know a little bit about Kind of like they do with the modules, right? We we went from eighty percent to fifty percent. We went from ninety percent to twelve percent. Like those sorts of things. Those are the types of things. When it's major changes, I think the only way out for them is to really give you all the details. At that point, I don't need to know. I don't need to discover it because it's such a major change. But a lot of these times, you know, they're just going to tweak some things. So. Well, the magic of discovery. I think that'll be my ship name. Yeah. Next week or so. <laughs> so Nick, yeah, for those of you watching the stream, Nick has highlighted that they've updated the descriptions on unstable and gravid assault damage control stuff. Because he scrolled, I couldn't see it. That's all right. So, um, 
so let's see. Uh, yep, the skill plan system was updated as well. Let's just kind of get back on some of this patch notes. Uh, there is some new rogue drone specialization skill book to give damage modifiers to those multi-plasma drones that are going to be coming. Uh, and they fixed an issue that caused ECMs to not work on marauders with uh, active bastion modules. So that's uh, for those people doing, um, you know, a lot of the, I don't know, uh, incursions maybe, or maybe C5s or something like that with a, a marauder and you activate your bastion, then your ECMs are now going to work, which is probably a good thing. All right, so the other thing that's been happening in the systems, game news wise, is of obviously, I think we've been, uh, I think yesterday we had a bit long stream um, where we uh, streamed the totality day parades, I believe is what it was, right? Uh, so, and then there was some races on, so I think there was kind of the parade and the race kind of in, in together. So anyways, let me, I'm jumping all over, but uh, so the formation day uh, stuff, um, we kind of started yesterday. And the campaign's on. Uh, there's events calendar. There's an events calendar out on the forum for the events going from the 9th to the 16th. Um, lots more stuff coming. You can uh, feel free to check all that stuff out. Uh, we might go to. We might you know stream some additional stuff like we did yesterday, where they had the EU time zone race around Posh, around the Poshvan Triangle. Uh, that was pretty neat. Um, they, uh, one of the guys uh, dual boxed a couple of shacks to get into uh, all sorts of fun stuff uh, as he was trying to watch the race. So it was kind of a, it was kind of a bit of a, you know, I don't know what the right word is. Uh, it was a bit of a comical uh, stream, but it was, it worked out well. Uh, so anyways, let me just get to the winners. Isaac Teraday uh, of Kybernauts Clade, uh, won in the U.S. time zone, followed by Desneaky Asian from IFED and Kylon Ulgadar from Breadfleet, and then the yesterday's race, the EU's race, uh, Recklin from Ascendance won, then Active Clone 001, Jazzy Jazz and the Pleasure Hub from Jazzy Jazz and the Pleasure Hub Bandits, and Elizabeth Wong from Karma Fleet got third. So first prize uh, was an Ikkasura and Skin, second prize won a Lashak and a Skin, and third prize uh, got a Vedmac. So congratulations to those winners. Um, and uh, like I think I mentioned earlier, don't forget that is uh, there is a totality event. Um, sorry, uh, login rewards. I think it's coupled with totality, but it's they call it the Apple Celebration uh, Day gift because they launched the Mac. So um, I think the totality skin. Sorry, I'm just commenting because I said the wrong thing. The totality event stuff I think was already last week where you could log in and get the login rewards. Correcting myself okay. live because I don't know how to read. Go ahead. Is there a login campaign for Totality Day? Uh, no, I think for the Triglave stuff. There was some Triglave login stuff just last week or something for the for the Triglave stuff. I you thought. Must have missed that. Yeah, every every day I think I logged in and got something for a few days. Uh, so the cosplay. Remember we uh, there was uh, we talked about that a while back. I think it was uh, promoted a, a number of places. Um, they finally announced the cosplay contest winners. So the first prize got um, just got a thousand dollars, two hundred, two thousand plex, an Eve watch, Rifter, uh, USB hub, male female apparel, and a special item. And that winner it was Carol Hernandez as a venture. A lot of work went into that. Apparently, he could even station spin in his venture, so that was pretty cool. Second place won five hundred dollars, a thousand plex, or uh, the same a Rifter USB hub and some apparel. That went to Arcano's Blood Feather, and he did. Uh, he dressed himself up as a triglave. It's a pretty spiffy photo. Um, third and fourth place uh, was 250 bucks, 500 plex, uh, the Rifter Hub, and some apparel. Third place was Sven Salzberg as an Amar officer, and fourth place was Lucas Amarillo in his Sisters of Eve combat armor. And then there was uh, some community prize that I, if I missed it, uh, I don't think um, they called it out in their site. So I don't know who the community person is who won it, but they got uh, they got some Plex and a, a watch and stuff. So that's pretty good. Also, uh, they have also released the best skins of 2021. You can buy a bundle out on the store now and uh, get the get that set if you're a big uh, person into skins. It's the green Demos Thanatos skin, Rockbreaker Pioneer Orca, Vampire Hex Gila, Vampire Hex Rattlesnake, 
Ghost Hex Orthus, the Ghost Hex Bargus, Hazard Control Loki, and the Ultraviolence Vortex Nix. Yeah, and let me just say uh, in passing that if you're getting started in trading, uh, this release by CCP is exhibit A for why you don't want to start with skins. Because if, you know, something is popular and it's demand in demand, there's a, well, you never know, but it is certainly possible that CCP will re-release it a couple of months down the road. And then, you know, you're going to have to sit on your skin for a couple extra months or you're going to have to... Uh, cash out at break even or at a loss and then you suffered the opportunity cost for all that isk you had tied up in these skins right so that's like a very volatile kind of high risk high reward market you might want to start with something a little bit more absolutely. conservative to begin with absolutely uh i don't think uh future future um you know prospecting with skins is uh anything like we talked about with the AT ships either. So don't uh, think like, yeah, I'll buy them now and sit on them for five years. I don't think uh, they have quite the same growth potential either in general. Yeah, well, I mean, you might get lucky. Like some of them are are quite rare and valuable. Like the load strike skins, for example, on the, the crane, I think is really cool. And I'll pay a premium for that. They haven't re-released it in the time I've been playing, but... Right. Um, but it's, yeah. pros it's prospecting of the nth degree, right? It's not like an AT ship. Yeah, but like, are you going to guess right which one they, they're going to re-release and Probably which not. one that they aren't? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. All right. So uh, what I like to call how to do Eve wrong section of the show, uh, there's a bunch of stuff in our show notes about Mac and Linux and like, oh, my God, who cares? Really? Um, apparently they released a Mac client, they broke the Linux client, they, refi they fixed it, someone figured out how to fix the wine, it broke again, someone else fixed it, congratulations, you guys are doing it all wrong anyways. So Mac, Linux, I'll let you guys look it up. That's all I have to say. All right. Uh, they will probably talk about it more in a little bit more in depth on the Sunday show, I would guess, if you're really interested and you want to do that. Uh, you're going to pound your head against a concrete wall while listening about uh, Macs and Linux. Go ahead. Rundle is not a Mac user. Oh, yeah. Well, but <laughs> hey, for you fanatics who are <laughs> Mac users, please, please, please keep buying those things because I own Apple stock. So buy the phones, buy the watches. Buy the, the laptops, buy all the tools, buy Apple, dress yourself in Apple clothes. I don't care. I just don't want to use them. I don't think they're, they're not for gaming in my mind. But anyways, uh, shitstorm aside, let's move on to Poshvan. Um, I apologize if I went through some of the news a little fast. Uh, a lot of this stuff, you guys, I would encourage you, well, you can go look up a lot of this stuff. But I really want to talk with our guest about Poshvan. So, Let's uh, let's talk to Fustin. Fustin, we have a problem. What's the problem? Who are you? And why are you here to talk to us today? Uh, hello, my name is Fustin. Uh, just a capsuleer out there looking at the monthly economic report. And ever since March, uh, I noticed that the payouts in Pockvin exploded. And so I did a little write-up on it, and I thought everyone should know. Excellent. All right. So, and I think this is one of the main reasons why. Uh, why we got uh, Malik, Malik Clips here as well, because, um, you know, to kind of dig in a little bit. So let's summarize what, so let's start at the beginning, right? So CCP releases the monthly economic report. Inside there is a whole shit ton of data about all these other systems and everywhere else in EVE. But for some reason, and we've talked about this even on the show, there's no Triglave stuff there's no posh fan stuff right it's, it's hard to track what's going on turns out the information is in the data download if you want to download the data there's still information in there but do you have any let's start with, the, with this question do you know why ccp doesn't publish those graphs yet when they do their overall mer breakdown do you have any idea i couldn't tell you uh probably at first embarrassment because the daily numbers were so low for Pacvin, and then now they probably just don't want to highlight it because it's so large. Yeah, okay. So, um, 
let's talk about those large numbers then. Let's talk about what's happening, right? So you have a, you have let's, you have a very clear kind of timeline. Let's I said let's start there. Let's walk through the timeline. Poshvan gets created. There's the whole uh, you know the 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 cause uh, not the cosplay, but you know the the shift they they start with you know hey these systems are going to flip. Was that was that uh, what was that day called? Totality? No, is that right? Is that totality? Do I get it right? I'm not positive on what they call it. Is oh invasion, totality, and then flashpoint? Yeah, it was during the third chapter of the Triglavian invasion, which I think was, I think it was totality was the name of it. I, I don't recall, but yeah, it was a whole process. You know, they flipped to the Triglavians by uh, degrees, phases. Each one took, I don't know, a week or two, and then at the end, Concord uh, blew up all the, the jump gates leading to the systems that uh, the, the Triangles had conquered, and then the Triglavians uh, rerouted them, and now you have uh, Poshman in your region. Right. So you're Poshman, you're back last half of 2020, and what do you do to make ISK at that point, if you're living in Poshman? How do you make ISK? Uh, you have to salvage the wrecks that are in the, the, that are around space from the NPC battles. Um, there wasn't a lot of sites to be run at that point. Uh, and then the flashpoint site, if you ran it then, actually, I'm told, uh, you lost trade Glavian standing, which was terrible for you because you wouldn't be able to take the gates after you ran the site too many times because your standings would go below the one, three, or seven threshold to use the gates. Right. Exactly. So, so here's why I'm setting it up this way. So, Triglave space, you know, Poshvan happens. There's this problem right now. Anyone talks, anyone in the game's like, hey, let's go make ISK. You don't think of Poshvan, right? That's not the place you think I'm going to go and make my 5 trillion ESCO, I can buy a shiny AT ship. Poshvan doesn't come top of your mind. Now, as you point out in your paper, February 9th is a patch day where they fix a very specific bug. Let's talk about that bug. Walk us through that. So that bug was the one I mentioned earlier, where when you killed the Edencom Dread at the Flashpoint site, you would lose Triglavian standing instead of gaining it. And on that patch day, February 9th, they fixed it. So you now properly gained that Triglavian standing. Which means now there's a valuable um, site. Well, not say it's a, it's a, it's a, well, it's a site. Yeah. It's like a, an incursion site. It's not a, it's not a mission. It's, it's a site. It's, it's in your now, probe scanner. Yeah. It's like an anomaly, right? An anomaly. I think that's what I was looking for. Right. And so now all of a sudden it's worth doing because the negative impact of the standings has been removed because right. this thing pays out three, what, if I'm going by what you have here, three and a half billion split amongst the fleet. And then you still get your loot and salvage and you might get, you know, a, a specific loot thing from the final loot box, the cash. And um, so now this is where what you're seeing, because you've been looking at the data, Talk about what was happening beforehand. Kind of what was the ISK payout that we were seeing beforehand? Can I, can I just uh, yeah. pose real quick? Sure. You're, yeah. you're saying that if you are a Triglavian aligned player and you run the observatory flashpoints, you do not lose standings with the Triglavians. Is that right? Can you repeat that? You do not lose standings with the Triglavians for running these observatory flashpoints, which are full of Triglavian NPCs. Is that right? Are you talking about the ones that are in, currently in HiSec Empire or the ones that are in Pachvin? Pachvin. So those have a lot of Edencom rats in them, uh, Amar faction. So you're, you're killing the Amar Edencom in those sites. I see. All right, go ahead. So is the Edencom dreadnought that you would kill, you would previously, the bug was when you killed the Edencom dreadnought, you lose Triglave standing. Now Correct. you gain it, so it's operating correctly. That was the that was the bug, right? Right. So so they fix that now. You kill the Edencom dreadnought at the end, as you'd expect in Poshvan. You get Triglave standing, and you finally now complete. So if we look at the, you have a nice summary um, kind of table at the end. You go from basically a you know kind of a daily ISK payout. According to the data of somewhere around two billion, 
and then um, you kind of get to 13 billion when they fix the bug, and then all of a sudden, about a week later, you're at 50 billion. Go to uh, think, slide seven instead yeah, of ten. Yeah, go to yeah slide yeah page seven there, Nick Forrest. Page five or whatever it is. Anyways, there's a so if you look at the table that you have provided us, uh, you all of a sudden jump now here in September with with the latest data. You go to two hundred and twenty six billion isk. So. It was two billion the day before they fixed it. They fix it a month, a week, a week later, it's fifty-four billion. Now it's five times that almost at two hundred and twenty-six billion and increasing. It's continues yeah, it's to increase. Just being farmed and farmed. Um, the other big part of that, where you see a, a sharp increase from uh, July to August, is when they patched out the what people were calling seagulling or crab sliding, which was stealing the payouts from the fleet who did it. So they fixed that, and that just caused everyone to ramp up how much they were farming in each day. So and I, so I think one of the additional points here is that, like I said beforehand, you're not thinking, hey, I'm going to go to Poshvan and bank, right? So there's not a lot of people who are the ones doing this. So this might, if you first look, you look at the numbers and you say, okay, wow, these are like, you compare them to elsewhere in the game. They might not be, you know, on par necessarily, but if you do it like a, a per person or a per pilot, I think the numbers are way out of whack because there's a very small group of people farming these very large numbers versus elsewhere in space. So um, I think one of the concerns is that if you're a posh fan person, this story might cause more people to come. Now, more people it come, might. comes opportunity for fights and whatever, but... There can be, you can contest the sites. Like it's, it's you know, it's full PVP area, uh, bubbles, dictors, everything. Right. So, because it's continuing to grow, right? I mean, this, this graph is it kind of, as they figured out, it was kind of flat. But I mean, really, since the last three, really in the last three months, it's just continuing on a pretty sharp climb. Um, have you done any of them? I'm curious, have you done any of the math to kind of figure out, is there a cap? Like if, because there's th three sites up simultaneous. And if you could get a big enough group of people to run all three sites, the moment they're up and kind of do that every day. So for every hour of the day and kind of maximize everything, there's got to be a maximum theoretical top point. Do you kind of, you done any, has anyone done any math or have you done the math to, to kind of figure what the, I'm does this top some, out at, yeah, does this top out at like 500 billion per day or anything I'm like doing that? some quick math here. And if you could run each site, like at least uh, like twice an hour, you're looking at, you know, 400 billion, I think, or so quick back of the hand math. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for, right? So, so we're, we're still a lot of room for growth. It does cap out. So I don't want to make it sound like, oh my God, look, there's this unlimited ISK tap there. But talking about, you know, talking about this before the show in my mind, I was, and I was thinking like, you know, at some point, if the, if the faucet is too much and you invite too many people in, now you, cause another problem because there's you know too, too many people for a small area i mean we're not talking about come on out to null sec we're 26 systems or something like that in poshvan right so right. if you get an overpopulation problem all chasing this 400 bill max isk per day then you cause another problem and so one wonders is this isk faucet wrong does it need to be tuned should it be tuned? And that's what I think this conversation, it really, this is where all this lines up in this conversation. Ultimately, what, what's your conclusion or what would you like to see happen? Um, let's talk through some of that. Like, let's get some opinions here. So full disclosure, um, I've never actually run the site on my own um, or personally. I have completed the, the trig version in HiSec once. Uh, which is a similar payout, except you get the DEDLP as well, and you're fighting trigs. But from what I've gathered from the Edencom community is that the Edencom version that's in HiSec uh, has a 90-minute respawn timer, 
Whereas, from what I'm told, the Pokvin version resets immediately. So after you complete it, another one pops up within those 27 systems, and you're able to find out, or you're able to find it rather quickly because you only have to run through the triangle. Versus the Edencom site in Isec or Losec, uh, you've got to search from you know domain to the forge through the Edencom fortress sites. So the, the level of scalability in your farm for uh, killing trigs at their site, the, the, tr the trig dread, is just so much lower because you're searching through 53 systems spread across all of New Eden versus 27 tightly compact uh, systems. Right. And I think that's, that's where my, in my mind I'm going with that is like, okay, so let's say for some reason, because we're talking about it today on Talking a Station, all of a sudden, um, 2,000 people decide to descend on Poshvan to try to run these things in various group sizes. What happens to Poshvan if 2,000 new people kind of show up? Uh, that, to me, seems a little bit wrong. It's not like um, you know, you're showing up into a, a large region that has, uh, in, in NullSec, that has, you know, 45 systems to it and and same opportunities in other areas. I mean, it's just 27 systems, right? It'll be a bloodbath. That's what will happen. So is that good, though? Now, is, so then, you know, opinion, is that, yeah, bring it on. Bring 2,000 people to Foshen, please. Right, yeah. Um... That many people contesting the sites, I think, would bring a lot of content for a lot of people everywhere. Uh, Bombers Bar might try to get in there. Goons are there. You know, everyone will try to get a seat at that table uh, if they could realize, you know, the size of this faucet. Because that 6.8 trillion isk that got paid out from Pakvin over the over September, that's more than like the top three regions combined for ratting bounties. Like it's an, it's an insane number. Yeah. yeah so that According to the MER, Delve was the top performing region uh, last month at 2.2 trillion. That's 11 days worth of these figures, approximately. Yeah, so it looks like it's just over um, uh, the the value for the, the payouts in Pochfin is just over about uh, the top three regions for uh, bounties combined. So it is an awful lot. Can you give us a sense of? What kind of um, hardware you need in order to run these sites? I mean, how much? How much? How? Uh, what's the size of the uh, asset pool that a player has to risk in order to collect those payouts? So to face tank it, you need some Lashaks, nesters, and you know, like a, a a command ship. But I've heard that some people run them in something as light as a stealth bomber. A group of stealth bombers. I can't confirm that. I've never done it. Uh, I'm looking into it, but I've never been able to figure out how. So, right. Let's say, could I run one of these sites with five marauders? Uh, I've been killed on the test server by goons with five marauders in one of these sites. Uh, I, I warped in on them, and they just blapped me. So I would say it's probably possible. To run a site with five, one of these sites with five marauders? Absolutely, I think. Well, I mean, that does sound like a quite a lot of reward in comparison to the risk you're taking. I mean, yeah, marauders are expensive, but um, you don't have to farm these things for very long to cover uh, your expense. So the issue you could potentially run into uh, with that setup of only five marauders is there's a minimum number of people to get the max payout. So each person might only get $230 million, and the first 15 people all get 230 million. And if you have less than 15 people, you don't get more than 230 million. It's just isk that's left on the table, kind of like the pirate FOBs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the other thing with that is that the Marauders uh, don't suck in PvP either, right? If somebody does decide to drop on you, they can fight back. They can defend themselves. They definitely can. Yeah. Yeah, and so so I kind of threw out the idea of like you know that maybe this is broken, right? Maybe it's not. What, where does this lie? But I think when you look at this this region with 27 systems is producing three times you know the the equivalent of three other systems in with um, two to three more 
systems in each of region, Delve and, and, and the other ones, that it just seems like it's imbalanced for the size of the ISK faucet. That's one statement in my mind. That's, you know, quote unquote wrong. Okay. The other thing that's wrong is if you brought two or 3,000 people to a region of space, the people living there, uh, yes, it's PVP. You got all the combat. You're going to have to live with that. Nothing's wrong with that other than this, the, the area was designed to kind of, um, you know, on some level designed to kind of hold a certain amount of people. The game can support that many people, but it's not necessarily designed for that many people. And, you know, if you have, it's such a small area, now you're going to have to deal with tie-dye potential issues and all those sorts of things. It just, there just seems to be imbalance issues, and I'm not sure it's what the game was designed and the region was designed to really do. If you want to have this kind of payout, you want to support that many people, then 27 systems sounds too small, or I hope they're all uh, have an extra shard or are backed up and are ready to hold a lot of people. Um, it, go ahead, Houston. It's a, it's absolutely like it. I think the more that this gets publicized, the more people will show up and the more fights you'll get. Uh, 2000 people at any given time sounds like a lot, but it, it's totally possible. I'll, I'll say this, like if you wanted to, like, let's say you were going to make the argument that this is okay. And you know, it's, just entertain that for a moment, then you there are at least two things you could point out. The first is that in terms of the mechanics, the way that Pochvin works, it combines elements from low sec and wormhole that make both of those spaces very dangerous. For uh, wormholes, of course, you have delayed local, and in uh, low sec, it's that there are NPC stations everywhere, and you know, people can just live in those things. You, you can't really control the space if someone decides they're going to, uh, to live in one of those stations. So you put those two things together and you have a very dangerous space. Um, the other thing is that uh, it, if, if these, these kinds of payouts, you know, as you say, if it becomes known, then people are going to come in there and fight over it, one would think. And so you could say, well, maybe the mechanics need to be adjusted, or maybe we'll let this go on for a while and see how the players respond, because the, the kind of ecological relations between uh, players, between the hunters and the hunted in this game, might attract enough hunters to uh, keep things in balance. In that case, you wouldn't want to change the, the mechanics, right? And that's something that you, you have to wait and see how a system plays out before you can really know that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. All right. Um, just just as a side note, uh, Nick's uh, in the background asked a really good question. Thanks, Nick. Uh, are you gonna? Are you? Do you publish this? Where can people go find this report? Um, I've only given it to you guys. Uh, I never posted it to Reddit or anything. If you guys want to post a link to it in the the stream, that's fine by me. Yeah, if you're if you're willing to do that, uh, if you're willing to let us post it somewhere, I think we can find uh, a place yeah, to put it. Sure. At least uh, we'll put it somewhere here on um, on Talking Station to start with. Uh, yeah. What's your long term goal for this? You're going to look at this data every month. I mean, you've set it up already, so I'm sure it's just drag and drop the new data in and see where it's going. Right? Are you? Yeah, planning? I've been looking since March. I've been yeah. looking every month since March. It's it's been a, a wild ride. Oh wow! So are you will? Are you are you like okay? So let's just talk about that. Are you looking to put it on Reddit or host it somewhere, or do you want to drop? Come on to Talking Stations, just drop them all on Talking Stations every. Oh month, yeah, that's fine. Or maybe that's the way you could do it, and we'll find a place for it. It's a TIS exclusive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That yeah, sounds great. Find, yeah, we can find a place to put it somewhere on Eve on uh, maybe in the under the Eve Online heading. I mean, there's not much else to do in Pokemon besides these. So, like, I understand why they're super heavily farmed. It's just, it it, it seems excessive for a, a company to put, you know, us into a space recession for a year and a half with scarcity and then have a 27 systems payout $7 trillion in one month. It just, it seems crazy. That seems a bit much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's kind of a push and the pull there, right? There's the pull of the sites, the whole the is you can make out of it, and then there's the push that so much of the rest of New Eden is impoverished right now. It's like, what else are you gonna do? Um, yeah. 
I wish that CCP would include data from Pochvin in the monthly economic report, because the whole point of this thing is transparency, right? We want to be able to see what's going on. And, you know, having the data in this, like, esoteric area where only people with certain programming knowledge can see it, but I can't see it just pulling up the website, um, seems like, you know, second best. It, that region has been around for over a year now, two years, I don't recall, but in any case, a while. And yeah. it's reasonable to have data for Pochfin side by side with Synclazon and PureBlind and all these other places, you know. So as as far back as my my graph starts the first day of the invasion, chapter three, when they invaded the system near Jita. Like they've they've had that data this entire time and they only split it off this March. So like I don't know if they were not tracking it before or they didn't want to put it out there before, but prior to March, like it was only incursion data, and then they split it. Hmm. And you can see exactly when, like I, I have it marked in color as well, uh, on a not the graph you're looking at at the moment, but um, like each section of when the invasion was happening, you saw a steady amount of payouts per day, and then Pockvin formed, and there's just a nothing there. And then all of a sudden, you've got an explosion of ISK coming out of the region, which is great. Like, I love trick content. I've been doing trick content since I came back last year. But I just think it's it's an insane faucet of ISK that needs to be checked. Yeah, well, uh, Pochman outperforming the, the next three regions combined is seems like a pretty serious distortion. It's a hell of a metric. I mean, these are the people who can afford those fancy AT ships. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> I know at least one uh, Titan is in Pockman, and one of the, the Triglavian people bought it off of Frat, I believe. And I, I think I know how they got that money to buy a, a Titan in, inside Pockman. Yeah, no kidding. That's all. I can just... You know. I can just imagine the Edencom players thinking, you know, they get getting all this, and we get what? We get our limited edition battle armor that, right. you know, that's it. <laughs> I mean, so just, I'm, gonna, I'm glad you brought up the Titan, because that's where I was, I was just going to throw out this data point, right? I mean, when you're looking at, let's say you somehow can get your corporation, get a bunch of pilots, and you can go farm enough of these things where you make... 250 billion over maybe just a couple days. That means you just bought yourself a keep star. Right. right. <laughs> Think about the corp taxes, 5%. Right. But let's say let's say you're just like, hey, as a as a corporation, we want to build our own and buy a, you know, a keep star. So we're going to set corp tax at 100 and we're going to just go and drop into posh fan. We're going to run these things for like, I don't know, 5 hours a night for the next 5 days. And I was like, okay, we just bought ourselves a Keepstars, right? Or right. You know, maybe you do this for a month and it's Titans for everyone, right? <laughs> Look at the, I mean, you, compare, you start comparing it to the things that we spend our money on, on in general. All of a sudden you realize you have a lot of money to buy the things you don't spend money on in general, like Keepstars, like Titans for everyone, like super carriers for everyone. Super carriers are now like 30 billion. So in a couple of days, you could buy ten pilots a super cap, right? Yeah, well, uh, I just could, called a super, you know, super cap or you know, a, a Titan a day. You <laughs> so, would have to monopolize all three sites for uh, you know for a couple. Right. Of hours. Yeah, that's why I'm saying like if you spread it over a few days, you might get lucky, especially if there's it's being contested and you're gonna have some losses maybe from the from the PvP aspect. But I, you know, I, if you're in an organization and you're a group of people who are constantly trying to figure out how can we get money for a Fortizar? How can we get money for a Keevstar? How can we get money for this? How can we get money for that? Well, this is another way to do that, right? And maybe do it super quick, faster than you can do it anywhere else in the game right now. Maybe part of the whole point is there's going to be a little more risk, but man, the reward seems three Huge. times better than anywhere else. So yeah. Ideally, you would get a couple guys together who have uh, some Marauder alts and, you know, maybe a couple of support ships, a lookout, something like that, um, to kind of uh, boost the effectiveness of your ships or increase their, their safety of the ships that are actually running the sites. And then you would go in during off hours and um, just try to monopolize them for, I don't know, six or seven hours. They call, I heard this the other day. They call uh, Crab TZ. 
you know that's like australian time where the u.s time zone players are asleep you know um, oh yeah they're but the crabs can come out in relative safety um and so you know you, you do that for i don't know a day a week for a month and yeah you could build up a nice little um nest egg you can imagine a scenario i guess where um this becomes the next big uh income stream like work walls were a year ago and um where people are just farming these things relentlessly and the big uh null sec blocks come in and and monopolize them or fight over them and i guess that seems possible um but i, I wouldn't want to like make a prediction about that because there's so many times where you know you look at the data and you look at the current trend and you think man this is going to get out of control and it never materializes. Like, you remember when the uh, formations were introduced and the small gang players said, oh, this is going to completely destroy us because people will be able to warp around inside of these giant uh, formations. That didn't happen. When the Nirvana implants were released, people said that uh, shield titans will be unkillable. That didn't happen. Um, you know, you never really know. You have to kind of let things play out. But it's definitely valuable to be made aware of this trend because you know as you point out Fuston, it does seem pretty distorted absolutely yeah so so we will put the we'll put the we've already put the report thanks nick for dropping uh the september's version uh over in hashtag eve dash trade dash market on uh on the talking station discord and we'll get uh, Fuston to maybe put whatever other um versions he's comfortable putting there and so, uh, yeah, so, we'll, you know, if you want to look at the data and look at his report, uh, you know, come on over to the Talking Stations Discord and come find the Eve-Trade-Market. Uh, Eve now, uh, Fustin, I have a, a question for you. Um, let's say somebody looks at your data and they turn to page eight and they say, um, well, yeah, the, the red line for the Triglavians for, for Pochfin is going up, but uh, it's still it's only what a third or a quarter of the sleeper payout. Uh, these wormholers have been making way more isk for a lot longer than the Pochfin guys, and that hasn't broken the game. Uh, what's the big deal? Let's say that somebody says that. How would you uh, respond? It's a great question. Uh, I think the density of that isk being made per per system, like you have hundreds thousands, I think, of wormholes out there that could be farmed, a farm hole for someone. And you've only got these 27 systems inside Pockfin. And I think that's the big the big difference is the the amount of systems where that is taking place and the amount of players. I think that huge part you mentioned is the amount of players. 27 systems, I don't know what the activity is per system, but I guarantee there's a lot less people living in Pockfin than there are when you total up the wormholes. Sure. So, so 800 billion, let's say, um, a day in wormholes distributed across, let's just say, 800 players, a billion uh, per player per day. That's pretty good, but it's not um, it's not as game breaking as in Pochfin, where you have, let's say, 200 billion a day distributed between like five players or something. Right. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And everyone so, in Eve loves to multi-box, so it could be one guy, like the twelve golem guy who would solo the world arcs. Sure. Whatever happened to him? Is he still doing that? Yeah, I think he is still around. Uh, I might actually try and get him on for an interview somewhere along the way. I think I know some people who know him. At least they say he's still playing. I, I think a more more reasonable comparison would be the incursions, right? There's only you know they did nerf the number of incursions uh, active. You know the time between them. They're, they're um, I think there's only one incursion at a time they're but they're up at the 600 billion um versus the two you know the 250 ish but well, I, it I, takes I, days to it, it takes days to run an incursion does it not yeah i, I think there are right. two or three incursions at any time for each security class yeah, high, high sec only has a single uh i think low is two or three and then Null is the reverse of whatever uh, low sec is. Right. And that, so that incursion is across all. Okay. So this incursion data, that's, thank you, Nick. That incursion data is across all incursion sites, right? Not just the high sec one. Um, and, you know, there can be a number of them. 
and they take days to complete, I think, if I understand how they work correctly. It can take you a couple days to complete an incursion. Absolutely. Is that, that is correct. Right. And so, you know, uh, it's, I don't know, it still seems, just as you guys, have, we've kind of harped on a bit here, the, the is density per region, is density per pilot, uh, it, it just seems a little out of whack. Well, there, according to Dotland, there are four incursions active right now, one in low, one in high, and um, two in null. And on the, the graph here on page, um, pull this up, which is eight. here. Yeah, on page eight shows that the incursion payout is also quite a lot higher than the, uh, the Pochvin one. Um, I mean, if you add the sleeper incursions and the excuse me, the sleeper payout and the incursion payout together, it's on five or six times what the, the Pochvin one is. Um, at least with, I guess the, the comparison to incursions is more relevant because there are a similar number of incursions, right? There are three of these uh, mega sites in Pochvin at any time, and there are four incursion incursions. But the thing that I guess makes the incursions a bit different is that they're spread out over different security classes, right? Well, there's like also they're also spread across different systems within a constellation. And you'll see anywhere fleets from as small as four or five on some of the lower end sites, all the way to 40. So there's a lot more people running a particular single incursion. Yeah. So it's, and it, it's and it takes really days. Right, and it takes days. So your your time, your return on your time, potentially is lower. Whereas you go run, you take an evening and you run four of the, you run four of the Poshven ones, then you're gonna get a pretty good payout for four for four or five hours of game time versus three days of game time. So it's not really possible for one group to dominate the incursions the way they could the the Poshven sites. Yes, I, I think that that's would. It's... That's the way I would look at that. Yeah, be a, a big change. But if if this graph dis, uh, displays uh, payouts over a standard unit of time, then the daily ISK payout for incursions would still be higher than that for the uh, Pochvin. Right right now, if you take the theoretical maximum that we talked about and bring that red line up to somewhere around the four hundred mark, um, does that change your opinion of what the graph is telling you? Let's say it continues to trend up, right? Are you asking me or if yes? You... I'm asking you. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, it seems to me that that this graph sh uh, gives us some reason for for pause before we say that these sites are you know totally broken. They're distorting the economy because um, yes, they, they are be they are going to fewer players, but it's. It's still it, it's just a fraction of the amount of well. First of all, from a macroeconomic perspective, it's not as important how many people are getting this wealth, right? It's how much is is entering the entire system, and the payouts from incursions and from the uh, sleeper data is way more than the uh, Pochvin ones. If the but if the Pochvin one you know steadily climbs and it's it's about 200 right now. If it's 400 next month, 600 the next, 800 the next, and you say, yeah, it's you know, starting to look like a real problem here. But because there are only three of them at a time, it does seem like there's the natural ceiling for those is going to be uh, much lower than at least the, the sleeper ones. Well, and they re got to remember, they also respawn immediately. From what I've heard, yes. Yeah, but that doesn't seem to be causing them to overtake the incursions and payouts. Yeah, what the the napkin math that uh, that Fuston did says it probably caps out around four hundred, four hundred, you know, four hundred ish billion a day. I think the case you could make here is that like a handful of people are making a crazy amount of ISK and uh, CCP should stop them. I guess CCP could say, well, why don't you stop them? <laughs> I think that's, that's my takeaway exactly as well, right? Is I think, but like I said, there was a game design, there was an idea in mind for 27 systems. And I don't think the idea was to have three or 4,000 people living in it, running and battling over, uh, you know, over a triglave incursion for lack of a better term, right? I don't think that was the, I don't think it's good game design. Don't think that's their intention. 
And so well, usually Eve runs into problems when the intentions don't match up to what the players um, end up using it for. And then you run into problems. That's sure. really my my take on all of this. Sure. Well, I guess if, if Hilmar or whoever were here, they would say, well, let's see if that happens. I mean, yeah, it could. <laughs> True. But they probably won't want to change the kind of the mechanics of the sites until it's like not just like theoretically a problem, but actually a problem. Like it's clear that Potchman is being overrun. Maybe they want it to be an enormous mosh pit. You know, that could be kind of cool. <laughs> like, like, a, yeah, like, an, like a, a proving ground arena that's 27 systems wide. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sounds great. All right, so maybe what we'll do is we'll talk about this again in a month. Maybe Fustin will uh, will have the next report. Um, I think we have uh, we have uh, flogged this one to near near death for today. Anyways, we're certainly going uh, into the tinfoil area of the conversation. Um, I, I would encourage everyone listening to come and look at the data yourself, draw your own conclusions, um, and uh, let's see what happens in Poshvan now that we're talking about it. And we'll see what happens over the next month. Uh, there'll be more data next month and then more data the month after that. We'll just uh, kind of pay attention and watch what's happening. Um, we should okay. start a, a thread in the discussion area. Yeah, yeah maybe we could do that. Or, uh, at least start, you know, come and look at the data. And uh, so from there, I mean, um, any final thoughts, uh, Nick, uh, Malik, Clips, uh, Fustin, you want to put on this? Or I think we've, we're good here. Something to keep our eyes on. For sure. Uh, just uh, you know, quick court plug, Ganja Clade, we're recruiting. Solve, solve null. All right, there you go. Ganja Clade. Ganja Clade. How do we spell that? Uh, ganja, marijuana. Oh, gan. Oh, okay. Speak ganja slowly. Clade. Use small words for him, man. <laughs> All right. So, uh, well, there's our show for tonight. Uh, you know, Fustin, we have a problem. Yes or no? Your ideas. Uh, put them on the. Come on to the uh, the Discord and uh, give us your ideas, or wait till you hear this on YouTube and and give us your thoughts on the information. Um, but anyways, I'd like to thank uh, Fustin for uh, being brave enough to come and talk about this uh, in person. I thank you very much for that, and uh, Malaclips for uh, for joining and helping with the analysis. And Nick, as always, it's a pleasure being anywhere near you or around you or anything to do with you. Thank you for doing the engineering. I appreciate it. I remember Nick will be running for um, CCP for the CSM sometimes in the future. So I will be his uh, PR coach. So when that happens, uh, you know, vote Nick, vote often, vote early. Hold not for CSM 20. CSM 20, there we go. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, joining the show. <laughs> Uh, that's me. been the show. Yeah, thanks. That's the, the show for tonight. Thank, and uh, thanks for spending time with us. Have a good night. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.